Hi there. So what I'm going to show you today is how you can use uh, Office Mix to actually record into your presentations. And the first one of a series of videos that I'm going to do is on data representation. Uh, so it's how you display data on your computer, talking a little bit about binary. Um, so moving forward, uh, there'll be some videos in these slides and there'll be a video, uh, a number of videos on my channel. So you should see me in the corner of your screen. Uh, so moving on. So uh, the objective that I want today is that I want students to actually be able to actually understand uh, that there are ways that computers represent data. Um, now, I want I'm going to show this slide to you because I want you to think back to primary school where you count in hundreds, tens and units. And I want you to think about the place value of that, uh, because to begin with, you've got your units, which could be like one to nine. And then once you've gone to nine, it moves into the tens column, which you can see here. So this, what this table is saying here is how you've got, you've counted to 10 once, and then you've got two units, which is 12. And that's basically how the number system works. And we're going to, you're going to see that we work in a similar way with binary. Uh, so uh, moving on to our next slide. The way that computers work is that they are made of millions of switches that turn on and off at, uh, at, at such a speed that you can't see it happening. So I want you to think about these switches as zeros and ones. These are what we know as a binary digit, a one or a zero. Now, if you are asked in an exam what is meant by a bit, uh, it's a binary digit. It's a switch within the computer represented by a one or a zero. Now, with this in mind, the impression that you can get from computer systems is that computers are very stupid in that they can only use ones or zeros. Now, moving on, this is the type of exam question that you would get in a, a GCSE computing syllabus. Now, you need to be able to explain why data is stored in a computer in a binary format. Now, moving on from that, so here's some think time, but moving on from that, circuits need to check for two states. So there's one way that you can get a mark for an exam question like that, because electricity is either flowing or it's not within the computer system. So that is either your one or a zero. Now, to extend that even more, you can talk about how this re results in more reliable circuits, because you could imagine if you've got four or five outcomes, that's four or five outcomes that could go wrong. Whereas in binary, you've only got a one or a zero, which can go wrong. So uh, that's something to bear in mind for the type of exam question that you might get at such an early stage. Now, binary, when you've got four bits of information together, this is known as a nibble. Uh, and what we start, we start, if you start from the far right and move your way up, you can see we, we go in one, two, four and eight. That is what we would know as a nibble. Uh, I'm just going to change the ink color now so you can see that. So that is what you would see as a nibble. Now, when we put eight of those bits together, eight binary digits, that is what we call a byte of information. So you can see what's happening here. This is working just like our deanery system where we count from one to 10. Uh, because what's happening here is this is saying we've counted to two once. So I, I would have a one and a zero here if I was representing the number two in binary. So it's pretty straightforward. Now to convert from binary to denary or denary, depending on how you pronounce it, you can convert it quite easily. Now, if I had to make the number 37, I would need to use a byte of information most likely okay or six bits uh, and what I would do is I would need to turn on the 32 and then I would need to turn on the 4 so this would actually become a 1 and I would also so that would make 36 I would also need to turn on so let's scribble that out the one here so 32 plus the four plus the one that would be one zero zero one zero one and that is how you would make 37 in binary so that's relatively straightforward now if i move to the next slide you can see what it looks like 
So you can have the four and the one. So that leaves us 37. Now, you, here's some that you can try. Uh, what I recommend you doing at this point is maybe pausing the video, giving it a go, uh, maybe using your grid where you go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 1, 2, 8, and so on. Move, move, start from your far right with the number 1 and work towards the left with the higher numbers. And remember to increase by 2 each time because binary is a base two system because you get either a one or a zero. If you want to try these out now, I recommend you pausing this video and then coming back to it. So here you can see the answers to those questions. So what we've got here is number seven is represented by turning a four, a two and a one on. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, number 13, you can turn the 8 and the 4 on, which makes 12, okay? Then you can turn the 1 on, which makes 13. 28 is 16, plus the 4 would make the 20, plus the 8 is 28. 63, a little cheat for you. If you have to make a number such as 31, you would turn on all the switches after the next biggest number value. And then we've got 101, which is 64, plus the 32, plus the 4, plus the 1. And that is how you make those in binary. Now, there is another method you can do. What you can do is you can divide the number by 2 each time. So if you've got a larger number, like 156, if I divided this by 2, you can see that 156 divided by 2 goes into 78, so that is zero remainder. 78 divided by 2 creates 39. 39 divided by 2 is 19, and you end up with a remainder 1, not 0.5. 19 divided by 2 ends up with 9, and you end up with a remainder of 1. 9 divided by 2 is 4.5, so you get a 4 and a remainder 1. 4 divided by 2 is 0. 2 divided by 2 is the 1, and this is where this final 1 comes in. And what you do is you start at the bottom and start writing that number out. So 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Now I will try to do a writing video of this method uh, another time so you can see how that works, but that is how you convert from binary to, sorry, from denary to binary uh, by using the division method. This is another way that you can see how it works. Uh, notice you've got your least significant bit and your most significant bit. The most significant bit is always the value that will be your highest place value. So if I was to write this out, I would write out 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And that is how I'd get my answer. There are some worksheets uh, available. Um, some of your teachers may give you different worksheets. Um, but these are worksheets that I've given you before my students uh, and they will have access to those. So I hope this video has been a, a, quick, uh, a quick stop introducing binary and uh, enjoy the rest of the videos. Thank you for watching.